Good morning, gardeners. Here I am on a Monday. I usually do this over the weekend, but uh, the weekend was kind of kind of busy, so here I am. Um, I've been away for a few days, away from the garden for a few days, and well, things are going like, growing like crazy, so uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, here's what's growing like crazy. Cucumbers. So um, I have four plants, and they are growing up a string. Um, they need a little direction to stay up the string or else they do what this guy's doing and kind of pull off to the side. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I prune my cucumbers a little bit. As you can see in every juncture, let me see if I, oops, you can see that there's a cucumber beetle on it. Bad beetle. Um, at every juncture, there's a chance, ugh, stop that. There's a chance for um, a new vine to form, kind of like a sucker on a tomato. So I often will pull these off. I don't always get all of them, but uh, what I want is a one main vine that goes up the string. And if you let all of these guys grow, they um, can overwhelm the string and the plant and all that, and it just gets to be a big old mess. So I'm gonna trim all of these off and I will redirect the vines uh, this guy's all tangled up. Um, you know, I just pretty much break off these tendrils here. Oh, I don't even think I could do that with one hand while I'm showing video, so I'll have to do it later. And then I wrap them around the strings. So I had a little space at this end of the structure. You can see it's a, uh, it's basically a, a pipe um, conduit that I use because it's strong. Um, so I threw in some, this is a chrysanthemum melon sprout. Uh, looks like that one's doing well, but this one looks a little sick. It might survive. We'll see. I got those seeds at a seed exchange and I don't know if it'll do anything. It's somewhat of an experiment, but we'll see. Um, the big change is I built a structure with netting over my brassicas. And I have in there, let's see, two cabbages, two cauliflowers, and broccoli. I don't think you can even see it very well with the camera the way it is. Um, it's taller than it really needs to be. Uh, I'm using these uh, four, four foot poles that I pushed into the dirt, and then I have these little connector doodads that are called um, sea bites. Uh, they work pretty well in terms of connecting poles to each other. This green size is very tight on these thinner poles. And when I was putting it together, it was really an effort to get them snapped onto the poles. So you snap them onto the pole and then they have a connector slot and you put them together and it makes a right angle. So that's how I created my little structure here. And then I draped over it a mesh that I got off of Amazon. It is a poly mesh. It's not easy to puncture. Um, why would I want to puncture it? Well, because um, I'm holding it down on the ground with garden staples, and you got to puncture to get them get it through. Um, garden staples can be a bit of a pain to pull out and put back in when you're when you want to access your plants. So I'm switching over to what the traditional. Um, Traditional covers are held down with just weights, in other words, rocks and bricks and stuff. So I brought some of those in to weight it down, but I didn't have enough, so I'll have to get bring a few more from home. Let's see. Um, my timer is running, is buzzing on me for my watering my tomatoes, so let me go switch that real quick. And I put it on a trickle and set a timer for five minutes and let it trickle for five minutes while I do other things. This helps get, um, get this positioned properly. There we go. Um, this helps the water sink in deep, which is what tomatoes prefer. It's going to be another really hot week this week. So uh, last week we had a lot of rain, which is great. Um, and it was cooler, so I didn't have to water as much, but um, now I'm getting ready for a hot week. I also want to show you this. I am very disappointed that the squirrels are still coming to my tomatoes and eating them, and damn it, 
that really bothers me. Pardon my French, so to speak. Um, means I'm not going to get many tomatoes. Makes me sad. Um, I probably won't get enough to do a decent canning. Maybe I'll make some fresh sauce. Um, I do have a couple of Amish paste that are surviving. This guy's really good size. Check it out. <laughs> so, um, I really have not been getting a whole lot of tomatoes this, this season. The red ones, at least. Because the squirrels are getting them before they get a chance. On the other hand, here I am with... Uh, my yellow sun sugars, and I've been getting quite a few of those. They're fun. Um, so this is my other red tomato slicer. All the ones that were lower got eaten, and so I'm stuck, well, I'm stuck waiting for these guys. Um, here is another uh, Amish paste. Actually, I have six Amish paste because I was hoping to make, well, not tomato paste, but tomato sauce. And I wanted to point out um, suckers again. So this guy is a sucker, and I know that because this is like a terminal top of the tomato. You know, with these Amish paste and the San Marzanos that I grew last year, I found that um, the branches that would form that had tomatoes on them would actually keep growing and become a sucker. And that's what this is. So I'm going to trim that off so that I have a little bit neater plant, not so unwieldy. And there's another really nice Amish paste on here. Um, you know, I complained about the squirrels um, coming and eating my tomatoes. I can protect them by draping over with um, some kind of netting, much like what I have on the, on the uh, brassicas, but gosh, it's such a pain to do that. You know, because every time you come here and you have to look, you have to take it off and then put it back on. And, you know, it's it's unwieldy. It's hard to manipulate. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But I do want my tomatoes. I invested money and time in these guys. So I might, well, just go ahead and get a large piece of of uh, netting or, or um, Spun polyester, that's what I'm trying to say. You know, that lets the light in and the water in when it rains, but uh, hopefully we will deter the critters. Okay, I jumped over this, um, coming to deal with my tomatoes. So um, I put in a row of arugula here, and as you can see, I'm getting some sprouts. Isn't that nice? And here I only put a skinny row of Swiss chard, which are coming in nicely. Um, I had to replant a few. And the reason I had to replant, or had to make it a skinny row, is that I needed space to hold down the cover. Another thing I'm not too wild about with planting these brassicas. Brassicas is a general category for cabbage and their relatives. So that's what I have here. Um, the reason I planted them was that, I don't know if I mentioned this in my previous videos, but our garden manager was able to get some, um, help out the, a local Ace Hardware store um, that wanted to get rid of all of its remaining transplants for the season. So we got a bunch of free transplants, and of course there were cauliflower and, and uh, cabbage and uh, lots of hot peppers, which, you know, it's not my thing. I already have enough peppers. On this side, I had an empty row, and so I'm using the empty row to hold down the cover. All right, and the last couple things to show you is my peppers, and they are growing pretty well. Um, I want to show you, I got a couple of baby peppers going. Here you go. Got that one and that one. Of course, when I say baby, you think they're smaller, but I guess they're, I don't know, child age. Um, so those, this one and this plant are the uh, Big Berthas, and these are the uh, lunchbox peppers, which you can see, at least I hope you can see, yeah, you can see my finger there. Got some little guys, they're, they're little sweet peppers that you can just munch on. Um, giving those a try, they turn bright red. Cool. And in the middle are some zinnias. Look, I've got a bud already. That's pretty exciting. Some of the plants have done better than others. Planted them from seed um, several weeks ago. But let's see what we get. Had a blank spot and didn't want to grow anything else. I can see my cukes from this side. I don't know if you can see down there. Yep, yeah, you can see it. 
um, I do have some flowers starting and I noticed a female bud. A female bud? What do you mean by that, Lauren? Well, let me tell you. So um, most cucumbers are male, um, have male and female flowers. The female flowers are the ones that create the fruit. So a male flower looks like this and it just has a plain old base. This is probably the easiest way to tell. You know, it's just a stem with the flower on it. A female flower, now I gotta find one. Go back to where I know I saw one. What well, has like a little baby cucumber? There we go, there's one. A little baby cucumber. Can you see that? Yeah, there it is, right there. That's it. So that's a female flower. Of course, it hasn't bloomed yet. And as long as it gets pollinated, um, it will form a cucumber. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So usually male... Oh, here's a female flower that's actually open. See, there's a little baby cuke. Right. Yeah. There you go. Cool. So maybe I'll be getting some cucumbers this week. Because once the cucumbers get growing, they are going. Okay, I have spent a lot of time showing you all the details of what I got. Let me turn around so you can see me again. Hi again. Lauren from Till and Trowel here. Um, watering the tomatoes and, well, trying to get it done before it gets too hot here. Um, it's supposed to be up in the upper 90s today. Well, I hope your garden is going well and you have some wonderful harvests. And uh, I will see you next week.